In this video, we take you to the beach in Bimini in the Bahamas and then set off on an early morning sail from Bimini 80 miles over to the Berry Islands. It was beautiful cruising through the shallow crystal clear waters. When the wind came up, we raised the sails on our Neil 43 trimaran. But the weather turned ominous as we neared the Berry Islands. Previously on Sailing Doodles, we boarded this Neil 43 trimaran in Miami and sailed across the Gulf Stream over to Bimini in the Bahamas. Day two of our trip, you guys ready to start it off with the beach? Yes. Yeah. All right, let's go ladies. Never been to Bimini, so I've always wanted to check it out. It has a really nice beach over here, this place called CJ's. Uh, it's pretty cool. And cool. yeah, let's do it. We got a slip and checked into customs at the Bimini Big Game Club and Marina. So it is kind of a resort here. They have like uh, like kind of nice. lounge nice. area, pool table. They have a bar and grill upstairs and a pool. I love the beach, but I do love a pool after the beach. Yeah. You know, to like wash the salt off. Yep. The office here, they actually bring customs immigration right here. Actually, the customs office is right down there, so it's easy yeah. to check but in here. Did you see it? Last night, I, they hung it up. Bimini is a pretty small island, so it was less than a 10 minute walk across the island to the other side to get to the beach. This is Radio Beach, and it's one of the more popular beaches on the island, and you can see why with the beautiful turquoise water. There are several restaurants and bars right on the beach. Not much better than a frozen drink with some good tunes right on the beach. This is just the first of the Bahamian Islands and the water is already spectacular. So Ernest Hemingway, uh, the famous writer, there was a little cottage there and a little hotel that burned down in 2006 that he used to stay at. So a uh, you know, little piece of history here in uh, Bimini. Cool. Lots he, of history here. Like 1935 to 1937, he spent here in Bimini. That's really awesome. That's yeah. cool. I couldn't imagine being here in 1935, how much different it would be. It was probably very isolated. Yeah. Um, you know, not like it is now. For sure. And, you know, probably just rode on the beach and walked around and met locals. Yeah. yeah. He used to box a lot here, too, apparently. Oh, interesting. Yeah. All right, we had a little bit of a rain shower this afternoon and cooled things off a bit. Now we are going to go dinner. It's our last night here in Bimini. What, you got it. Just put your hand over there. Yeah, this is being filmed. Oh! <laughs> it's high tide right now, so. Oh, it's, it's high been, tide? Yeah, it's yeah. high tide. It makes it a little difficult getting on the boat. Low tide is easy. Yeah, regular tide is easy. But... All right, so uh, we're going to a place called Big John's. It was uh, just open last time I was here, I think, so. It uh, gets a little rambunctious. Oh, which one jump in? It doesn't take long to get anywhere on Bimini, but the rain can slow things down a little bit.
guys. Have a good sale tomorrow. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. It'll be better. Yeah, you said that last time. You said that last no, time. No, I knew it was going to be. Uh, not as bad as it was, but I didn't think it was going to be smooth. Hopefully tomorrow's okay. Yeah. Well, the sun is not due up for another hour. It's 6.20, sunrise is 7.20. Uh, but we're getting the boat ready to go because we want to be gone at, as soon as it's early, bright enough. Sorry, I see a Stephanie running around. Good morning, Steph. Oh, no, don't do this right now. Okay. Knew that was going to happen. It's. 80 miles plus to the Berry Islands, and um, uh, there's not a whole lot of wind out there, um, less than 10 knots, so probably have to motor sail just to get there in time before sunset. We'll see, but it's the only really good day to do it because this evening around midnight, a pretty strong northerly blow comes in, and so we want to beat that. Uh, hang out in the berries while that moves through, and then it gives us another window to keep on heading to the Exumas. So, because uh, we didn't leave now, then we'd be stuck for that northerly, and there's another one a couple days after. Anyway. We just gotta go now, so we're doing it. And Stephanie's saying, do not point the camera at her. So if you see if you see me show the chart here, the chart plotter while I'm underway, sometimes it looks uh, on the camera like a little brownish or like hazy, and that's actually because of the UV filter I put on the lens here to make this look better so uh, that's what that is so if you see it look a little weird it's not the char plotter it's the UV filter the ND filter that I have on here to make everything else look better so it is the cold gray light of dawn it actually looks brighter in the camera than it does with my own eyes here it's crazy that's how good that lens is but uh, yeah it's just about uh, light enough to uh, start navigating, so I'm going to start the engines and we'll just connect short power and get going. Steph threw off the lines and we were off the dock. So the wind's out of the north at about seven knots. Uh, it's supposed to be about that all day, so we're probably gonna have to motor sail. We'll put the uh, spinnaker up if it works, uh, the spinnaker, um, if it's uh, if we get the right wind angle on it. Um, but we got a motor north to the uh, north end of Bimini, and then we go across the uh, the bank there to uh, the Berry Islands. So we got to get north here about six miles, then we'll turn east and hopefully put some sails up and be sailing. How you doing? Good. I'm a little tired, but I couldn't sleep a lot. You know what? I think knowing I have to get up early, I like am so anxious that I don't sleep. Well, you didn't even get all your beauty sleep, and you're so beautiful. Josh. Back it up into the parking spot. I said, I wonder if he has any rear view cameras. Oh, sure. I'm telling him, all right, we're all right. Yeah, a little left. <laughs> Eric said, oh, we, were, we were going to come into his, through his stern until we realized he's backing up into the uh, cruise ship uh, dock there. So now we're going to pass in front of him. So I don't know you guys. How many of you guys have been on a, crew, le on, on a cruise? Leave a comment down below. I've never been on one. I've heard mixed reviews. I, I, I've heard it really depends on your boat and the kind of cruise you're on. I wouldn't mind doing one. Uh, let me know in the comments also if you wouldn't you want to see us like take a cruise one week and maybe even one of those sailboat cruises or something you know like the big uh, wind jammers or something although I, those are kind of shitty boats but i don't know let me know in the comments down below Now I've always heard that uh, the bigger the boat, the easier it is to drive. I imagine those are pretty easy to drive. It's all electronic, you know, million thrusters. 
It's a yellow submarine. It's a submarine. Wait, that's so... Oh, that's scary. I don't know if I could do a submarine. It's not a real submarine. What? It's not a submarine. It's a... It's just a... It's a marker. It's a marker for shallow. It looks like a submarine. Why did you tell me it was a submarine? <laughs> because you thought it was funny. Yeah. Yeah, you're so funny, Bobby. Are you still recording? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Thank you. Okay. There was only a few knots of wind as we motored into the sunrise. This bank's like really shallow all the way across and there's it's nice because there's very little wind and so you just see the bottom. Like later on, I mean I've done it been out before and saw like a lot of starfish and stuff, but yeah, it's pretty cool. So you can just look at it all day, it's so beautiful. Yeah. It's water in the Bahamas is like no other. People have told me that they'll come out here on this bank and like because it's you know 75, 80 miles over to uh, the very island. So if it's gonna be a calm night, like no wind overnight, they'll come out and just anchor out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, honestly, you can do it. I mean, there's only, what, yeah. 12 feet, and, you yeah. know, it's, it's going to be calm, and yeah, what's the difference between this and another yeah. anchorage? Yeah, and we'll be, you know, and you're still going to be 20, 30 miles from land. It's kind of cool that you're it's, anchored in the middle of nowhere. It's pretty cool. I'm sure that at night you can just, who knows? I mean, snorkeling during the day, you can do all of that here and jump in, and it's yeah. gorgeous. I think I need to fly the drone again right now since it's so calm. Yeah. Take my pants off. My cool pants, it's from pants into shorts. Where's the bikini? I'm done to get over my shoulder. This shallow bank stretches for about 50 miles and when the conditions are calm like this, it sure is spectacular. This Neil 43 trimaran that we picked up from Performance Yacht Sales in Miami sure looks beautiful in this crystal clear water. She's pretty fast too. Under sail, we're averaging about nine knots and on the motor, we're doing seven and a half on one engine. So we're using about half the fuel as a comparably sized catamaran. If you'd like more information or to schedule a test sail on this Neil 43, which is the Sailing World Boat of the Year, contact Performance Yacht Sales at pyachtsales.com. You really can't ask for better conditions trying to go east through the Bahamas. The trade winds are generally pretty strong out of the east, so it can make it difficult. So I'll take calm conditions over a beautiful bank like this anytime. It made for a lazy day on the boat. Eventually the wind picked up enough that it made it worth putting the sails up. picked up a little bit six knots out of the south southwest uh, so we got the sails up we're still motor sailing but that gives another knot yeah and we still got 60 miles to go so another knot right now saves us more than an hour so. I know. And it's, but it's nice out uh, a little rolly i guess it's just uh, yeah you still winds. got the swell we were protected earlier by the mountain by the way our mountain by the mountain by the island uh but now the swell is kind of rolling around because it's been out of the south hard for the last few days so this yeah. is still that but it's not bad. No, it's nice. The water's beautiful. Yep. Can't complain. We turned the motor off just to see how the Neil would sail in light wind conditions. In six knots of breeze, we were still making four knots, which is pretty good.
wind has died off, uh, so I've pulled down the Genoa. Still got the main out, but it's not doing anything. It's just kind of keeping it in place. So uh, the crew is sleeping, so I don't know. Not much more to do. Got uh, 40 miles to go, so like five and a little over five hours. We're doing eight knots. Uh, we're just motoring at eight knots, which is nice. So it's supposed to be pretty nice, fast on the motor at 2,000 RPM. So not even pushing the motor hard. Looking a little stormy up ahead. Got about 18 miles to go. Wind is two knots. Before we get to this little line, uh, it looks like showers, and I gotta pull the sail down just in case there's wind with it. I could go for a dark and stormy. I don't really like dark. I don't like dark rum. Really? No. I've had a dark and stormy once. It's good. <laughs> Depends. Gotta be in the mood for it, but. Uh, we'll pull down the sails here in a little bit. One thing that's always been a pain in the butt if you have had a mainsail that's not furling is, you know, normally these sail bags have these zippers and it's a real pain in the ass. The zippers deteriorate and you can't get them to zip up and they always break. I really like this design, how they have this kind of weighted uh, cape, uh, cord or piece of nylon here attached to a flap that pulls over. So then from the other side, you just line everything up, throw this over so it's weighted and it stays there. Then you come down here, hook it up, tighten it down. So now you're protecting the sails. I mean, that took a couple minutes to do this whole thing, whereas like trying to zipper all that crap and do all that is a pain. So I really like this design, pretty nice. Looking a little ominous. I don't see any rain behind it. It's just definitely a line. There was a front coming through anyway, but there's like two fronts meeting, but yeah, rain way over there, but there's none right here, but it could be a wind line here. So we pulled the sails down and because there's no like two knots of wind right now anyway. I don't think it's really any big deal here. It's, you can see the wind line up there and then it looks glassy past it. So, I mean, it's just a little front. Not much wind with it, I don't think. So. Nice breeze though. Yeah. Arr. Arr. <laughs> A light rain started, so we headed into the salon. So it is nice that it has kind of like a kind of a nav station here with a multifunction display, so you can see your wind and all that if you want. And then it's got uh, an autopilot control right here with the radio on that, so you, when it's raining, you can just sit right in here, and uh, you still have pretty good visibility most of the way around. The only place you can't really see is the starboard side, and I guess you could if you put the blinds up on that side, but we have the blinds down in the bedroom for privacy. But yeah, I'm in. A nice thing about the rig on this boat is that you can easily raise and lower the storm jib to make the use of the Genoa that much easier. Kind of an overcast afternoon, but we're almost there. It's uh, what, almost six o'clock, so. About 11 hours total today to get there, not terrible. Going 80 miles, that's pretty good. It's calm though, the whole way, so yeah, I can ask for better conditions. Yeah, so this is Barry Islands here, we're going to the Bullocks, Bullocks, not Bullocks, Bullocks Harbor. Uh, and then right over there actually is the private islands from like uh, Royal Caribbean, uh, maybe Norwegian has one too. So the cruise ship stopped there, a couple of, saw a couple of them leaving earlier. So tonight we're gonna kind of low key cook on the boat and then uh, tomorrow we'll go explore the island a little bit before heading south.
Bullock's Harbor is a pretty small little village with just a couple restaurants, and most of the inhabitants make their living from the cruise islands. Pretty close to our anchorage was an old airplane wreck. We were excited to go snorkeling. This is our home for the night, uh, Bullock's Harbor right there. For tonight, we're just gonna kinda chill and uh, cook some dinner on the boat, have a glass of wine, and uh, just relax, because it's a long day, 11 hours on the boat. It was, it was, it was a long day, but better than, better than, better, uh, than, better, better than, than the first day? For sure. Yeah, not, not bad. Too bad we had to motor, but I mean, like, it's better motoring in no wind than beating into what we had to do the other day. Fantastic meal prepared by Steph. Thank you. You're welcome. And a uh, pretty good day on the water. Not bad. It was a long day, but we made it. It was nice and smooth. Wait, I have wine. What am I doing? <laughs> I don't know. She forgot her wine, of course. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers to a good meal and good sailing. Yeah. Well, motor sailing. <laughs> mm. We motor sailed most of the day. But uh, so tomorrow uh, is kind of a chill day. So we're going to go. Uh, explore the, uh, we're gonna go snorkel on the uh, wrecked airplane over there. Go ashore, check out the Berry Islands, and then we're gonna set sail the next day down towards Nassau, maybe the Exumas, we'll see. So be sure to click that subscribe button if you wanna follow along and see us snorkel on that airplane over there. It's like a DC-3, it's been there for a while, it looks pretty cool. I know, watch me cold, but watch us uh, see ya. Yeah, all right, there we go. Thank you to Performance Yacht Sales out of Miami for the boat on this trip. So far, we are really enjoying it.